Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brianna Lentz. Um, if you're new here, I upload all different kinds of crafting videos, food videos, lifestyle videos, floss tube videos, all sorts of things, um, crochet videos. Go ahead and head on over to my playlist and I have things categorized uh, to make it easier for you to find or just scroll back through. I've uploaded a lot lately, so everything that you see is probably from the last couple of months. Uh, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so that way you are, um, you know, rung every time I upload. And uh, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So what are we going to be doing today? Today I am going to be walking you through how I painted Dollar Tree wood signs and how I achieved the, these different looks. So for $1 and some paint, I've got really cool Halloween decor. Um, this is great to just hang on your wall for Halloween or if you're a cross-stitcher, a lot of cross-stitchers will mount their cross-stitch pieces to um, some kind of uh, mat board, foam core, whatever, and then they'll hang it and then they'll hang it um, underneath or you can do whatever. But I just go with through how I achieved this look and shading and everything. And I think it's so cool. So for $3, I have a really cool, unique, handmade decor for Halloween. And there is a lot more to choose from. I was just at Dollar Tree and they still have a bunch of Halloween decor. And they actually have um, some of these same kind of signs, but for Christmas already. So if you haven't already, go to Dollar Tree, check it out, and see what you can get because this wood for a dollar is a crazy good deal. So let's go ahead and get started into today's video. This is my favorite part of any project is selecting out of my stash what I'm going to paint. I had sugar skulls, I had uh, ghosts or Halloween castles, and I chose to use all the word signs that I purchased. So I got Wicked, Happy Halloween, and the classic Trick or Treat. So let's get started. All right, if you watch my uh, Painting Pumpkins on Coasters video, then you will notice I am prepping my wood a little bit differently. I didn't use any gesso or any primer on the surface. Hold on. Audiobook? Check. I'm listening to The Grace of Kings. It's an epic fantasy, and it's amazing. I'll link it down below. Um, but, so all I did was put some painter's tape over the pumpkins to protect it from the black paint, so that way I wouldn't have to worry about doing multiple coats of orange over my mistakes. And this worked out really handy. Uh, I ended up using about two coats of most of the colors. I'm using Spice Pumpkin by Americana there. All of the paints that I use will be linked down below in a post for on my website at briannalens.com. Like I said, that'll be linked down below. But I did mostly two coats of everything except for purple, which you'll see next in my Happy Halloween sign. And I had to do five coats of that. But this was really easy painting. The only fiddly part was going on the outside and all of those little in-between spaces that were laser cut. But other than that, really mindless, immersive painting. This is totally a project that you can do with your kids, little ones, girlfriends, best friends, whatever. And it's just nice to have something that you put a personal touch on up at your house or for anything or as a gift. This would be cool to put on a wreath or give in a gift box if you're doing the classrooms or for your teacher, anything like that. So I'm going to repeat the same type of process for all of the signs. Of course, take a picture, and we're going to go straight to Wicked. And I love this fun trick. I love watching people do this in videos. Are you ready for it? Don't blink. Yes. Okay, now we are on our second coat, just going over that with Wicked. And again, the same process. The funnest part is picking out, like, what you want your design to look like and how far you want to go with it. And I chose to do Green and Wicked because... Of course. Wicked. How could you not? Oh, see that? Nice trick. I'm getting better with my editing, you guys. And here is that purple that I was talking about. This is Concord Grape. And like I said, I had to do five coats to make it opaque, which I was not expecting. Um, that's definitely where if I had put gesso on to begin with, it would have been really, really helpful. Now that everything is base coated, we get to move on to our shading. I chose not to highlight. I chose just to do simple shading. And this was the funnest part of the entire project was practicing shading. I'll move on to highlighting with something else. I thought I could get away with not adding highlights because it's Halloween. 
But man, I just encourage you to step out of your box and go a little bit harder on shading and things like this because it really adds a warmth to your projects. Okay, I am at the point now where I need to shade this. And out of pure laziness, I thought about not adding the details. I'm gonna add the details. I'm gonna add the details to the broom, which is gonna be a lot of fun. And I'm going to figure out how to shade properly in this Curse of Wicked, and then I'll add some fun to the moon. Okay, I <laughs> started to do the shading where the moon was, and then I decided I would just basically create a shadow along the whole thing because my light source didn't make any sense. So I decided to just go with style versus logic. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next project. Bye!